Hello, Keshar is here and it's so nice to be with you again. And uh, today I'm going to say, show you some, uh, uh, another vegetarian dish, uh, which summer is here and all the beautiful fruits. So it's going to be a fruity dish. I still frankly haven't found a name for this dish. This is my new recipe and I've always asked my uh, beautiful friends like yourself, what do you think we should name this dish? So it's up to you. Send me your emails and tell me what you like to this, uh, the name of this dish to be. And then uh, we'll see what we can do. And this dish is pineapple, mango, and uh, red and green bell pepper, celery, mushroom. I have cut this uh, pineapple, but I'm going to show you also how to do it. I was in the process of cutting the whole thing, but I decided it would better I stop so, so I can show you how to cut it. So I cut the pineapple to cubic. With some dishes, I cut them in squares. The reason I cut it in cubics because there are other uh, fruits, it's going to be square. So I want to have a combination of different sizes and different shapes. So what you do, if you cut the, uh, cut the pineapple to the size, so it would be easy to get the core out. So we get the core out. And then I have this in cubics. So we cut this skin off. And when you do fruit stew or any dish with fruit, you always make sure that the fruits are cut enough to the size that it could be edible. You don't want it too big, you don't want it too small. You want them to see what they eat. And at the same time, when you cook it, if it's too small, it would overcook. If it's too big, it won't cook. What I'm doing with all these fruits, because they need different temperature, and they also need uh, the, the, the level that they heat they need to cook is different. What I'm going to do, I'm going to saute and glaze each fruit separately. Then I'm going to put them all together. So with pineapple, it goes going to be first. We are going to cut the pineapple in the shape and the size that we want. Make sure that they all are more or less the same size. With, for this dish, I'm using half a pineapple, one mango, half a, a red pepper, and half a green pepper. It's your choice. If you don't like green, don't use green. You want to use yellow, use yellow. The reason I'm using these colors is because I want the plate Always, always when you want to cook, think of the finished product, how you want it to look. Then you start cooking. I want my plate to look and show different colors. So I'm using green and red and uh, mango is very delicate, so you have to be very careful. Mango, you cannot cook it for a long time. Mango is hard for, it, for you to give it a shape. So you have to be careful. If you cannot give shape to the mango, then give shape to the other ingredients that you use, like pineapple, like the uh, green beans. And the ingredients that I am using here, beside the fruits, are, I'll go over it so you'll get a feel of what we have. Uh, 
So this is the pineapple. Now, we have half a pineapple, one mango, then we're going to skin the mango. Sometimes when I cook this dish, I leave the seed of mango in the, in the stew. Let it boil and let it really uh, cook with the whole stew. Then before, when the time comes for the presentation, I take the seed out. You know, and then at, you have all the juice and everything of the mango in your stew. Because the seed is so big, if you want to really cut it, you lose a lot of meat. So the way you cut it, you see the seed is already, so cut the bottom. Some of you always complain or are so critical and tell me why you use your hand. Well, you have to use your hand if you're a cook. Okay, and now I'm not going to deal with this anymore. I'm just going to leave this in the stew. Because the mango is so delicate, I'm not going to cut it in smaller pieces. I'm just going to leave it the size that it is. So, <clears throat> then I've got beach mushroom. Beach mushroom, I'm going to cut the mushroom to the size that I want to use. The reason I got this, you can use any kind of mushroom that you like. The reason that I got this, because I'm going to cook as a whole like this. I'm not going to take it apart. I've got half an onion, medium onion. And you, I've chopped the onion. I've got walnut. I've got three, spoon, three uh, soup spoon of uh, uh, walnut chopped. I've got two tablespoon of cornstarch. I have three tablespoon of uh, uh, sugar. And I've got some orange peel. And I'm going to use an orange. I'm just going to use the zest of this orange. And two small pieces of celery. The reason I put the celery is just for this to be uh, crunchy and it just when you bite a mouthful of a, this uh, stew, you get different flavors and different tastes, different textures. And that's what makes the whole dish uh, enjoyable. So I'm going to cut this in small pieces. Okay, now we're ready, the fruit is chopped. I'm going to start with sauteing the onion. High heat to start. Olive oil, you can use any kind of oil that you want. Onion. If you notice, I've chopped the onions or at least I julienne the onions. So I would have a bigger piece of onion instead of having a small piece of bigger onion. We want this, I want this dish, everything to show what's in it. So that's how I cut the onion in bigger pieces. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this whole thing here and show you one at, at a time that how we're going to do this. While this is being done there, in order to use or cornstarch or sugar in a dish, you need to Put some water and dissolve this with some water. So 
So we had two table, a teaspoon of cornstarch, just about one teaspoon of water. We had two spoon of uh, sugar, one spoon of water. You keep stirring this till it really dissolves. See? And the same thing with the sugar. I don't want the onion to really fry here. I just want the taste of onion. The first thing that I'm going to add is the pineapple. As I said, it's your liking. If, if you want the pineapple to be smaller, cut it in smaller pieces. Another thing, make sure that your pineapple is ripe and sweet. Because if the pineapple is not ripe, the, the, whole t the taste of the whole dish would change. Because if the pineapple is sour, it takes about, about away from the sweetness of the dish. This is a sweet dish. Turn the heat down. And then the second thing you, you add is the celery. And the seed of the mango. The heat is on medium right now. Now I'm going to add the peppers and mango. If you remember, I told you that I want to glaze the fruits. That means a spoonful of syrup Again, cut it to the sizes that you like. I told you because the pineapple is, I cut it in cubes, I cut this in juliums or straight. After each ingredient that you add, you stir it.
and add a little bit more syrup. Now I'm going to add the mangoes. You notice that I'm putting bigger pieces of mango. Again. We will add more syrup. And stir again. See how colorful it is? Now I'm going to use the orange zest. Just a You don't want too much, just get something off the skin. You see it's all on the other side. So you just get it off the uh, what it smell. Okay, a little bit more syrup. Now we're gonna add the walnuts. And also the orange peels. Again, spoon of sugar and stir again. Oh, I love the look of it, beautiful. When I was creating this dish, I knew that the, it would be colorful and beautiful to look at. Okay, now now we are going to reduce the heat, add the cornstarch and the rest of the syrup. Just look at the way it looks. See how beautiful it looks? And I'm going to add a little bit more water to the syrup. It's there. Turn the heat down to medium. Beautiful. Set it aside. Low heat. And cover it. Low heat. Cover it. Now, is the time to taste this and see if I need to add a little bit of salt into this. 
If you notice, I didn't put any salt or any pepper in this. Mm. Just a dash of salt. You know, of course, that salt and sugar has nothing to do with one another. Sugar is it's sour, salt is always needed. Now I'm going to fix the rice. I'll put this in the back burner. And remember, every time that you're in your life, if you put anything on the back burner, you need to go and check it once in a while to make sure if you need to move it to the front burner or just leave it back there. Because there are so many things in life that we do and we put it on the back burner and forget about it. That's one thing. If you put it on the back burner, that doesn't mean that you should neglect it. You put it on the back burner because you've got other things to attend to at that time. So I'm going to fix the rice. Okay, I've got one cup of rice and now we're going to wash it. When you wash your, the rice, make sure that you wash it with the lukewarm water. And don't massage the rice, Just you just make sure with your finger and just, you want the cloudy water as long as, so it could be a clear. You're getting most of the starch out. See, it's getting clear. If you want to learn more, go and watch the polo, the uh, videos that I have on polo, see? Okay, <clears throat> when the pot is too small, don't put too much water, because it will overflow. But you've got about, maybe an inch from the top and then put it on high heat add the salt okay one thing that you should and remember, when we are having a sweet stew, we don't put too much salt in the rice. The rice should be a little bit on the light side. And then we are going to add oil. Don't be afraid, use your fingers uh, for stirring, for tasting and all this. You just need to be clean. See how often I wipe my finger or wash my hand. Okay, now we let this simmer and cook. Just make sure that you pay attention to it. Okay. Now is the mushroom part. What I do with the mushroom, this is the part that I want to use. And I don't want to break it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it on the side. And in case if you break it like this, you just have to somehow decorate it. So it would be as a whole in your plate. See how, this is how I want this to in my plate. So I'm gonna get a small frying pan.
put the rice on the other side. Oil. You've often asked me what kind of a, what type of olive oil I use. I just use extra virgin. It's your taste, what brand or what you would like to use. With this mushroom, you really have to baby it because it's just tender and it just breaks off so fast. So I'm going to let my, let the oil a little bit get heated. Then I'm gonna put the mushroom on the side. You hear the noise, the buzzing. And mushroom always tastes better if you use butter. So, if I can find my butter, so this I have to use a Be very gentle. Turn the heat down. I'm looking for for butter that I had put out, but adding the butter just a little bit for the taste turn this down onto the low just let it sit Check the stew. See the mango is already melting. So I'm going to take the top off because I don't want this to cook too much, the stew. Turn the mushroom off and just let it cook with the heat that be 
beautiful. So we put it back and we bring the rice here. So I'll come back and show you the presentation. Okay, we're ready. It's been almost about 20, 25 minutes and the rice is ready. And now I'm going to show you the presentation. <clears throat> of course, you have different choices. You can either serve this by itself or you can serve it with rice. You can serve it on top of the rice, whatever, but I'm going to serve the rice in a bowl and the stew separately. I'm trying to be careful so See how fluffy the rice is. Now we've got, let's look how be colorful and beautiful the stew is. Presentation is very important to me, so I make sure that after all this trouble, that you take out the seed of the mango and now we bring the bell peppers up here. This is parsley. Let me fix this up.
pure leaves of mint. Make sure that you So are we ready now? <laughs> bon appétit.